So OpenAI have just released GPT 4.1 directly in ChatGPT. Now GPT 4.1 was released in the API about a month ago. And since then it's had really good reviews. But the one thing is you really have to prompt it properly, which is why they've released this 4.1 prompting guide, which is absolutely massive. So I've basically broken this down into a step-by-step -step guide, which we can use today, which you can get for free in the AI Automation Hub School community. And this is it here. We'll go through this in a bit, but first we're gonna actually give it a try against the other models. So first let's look here at how good it is. As you can see, it's better than the 4.0 Mini, much better in fact here. You can see it's a significant leap in small model for performance for the 4.1 Mini. And the 4.1 Nano is our fastest and cheapest model available. Nano is not in GPT, it is only the 4.1 and 4.1 Mini. So if we come here, I have a side by side. I have 4.0, 03, 04 Mini, 04 Mini High, 4.5, 4.1, 4.1 Mini. Quick breakdown of what these are. Everyday tasks, reasoning, fast reasoning, coding, and if you're get pictures you want to reason on. Then we have writing, and then this is quick coding and analysis, so data analysis, mainly, right? Think of it for that. And then 4.1 mini is a, a mini version of this. So these two, though, really require a solid prompt, right? Now, if we keep going down here, we can see on the SWE Bench Verified Accuracy, which is Software Engineer Bench Marks, essentially, 4.1 is their highest here. 4.1 Mini is their best Mini, so it's their best one they have so far on this Polyglot benchmark. See, it's not quite as good as these, but you know, it's really doing quite better than 4.0, and it's not a reasoning model. You can get it to reason by asking it to think and stuff, but generally it's not a reasoning model. Um, and then just gives examples here of this 4.0 output. You can see it looks like this, and this is 4.1's output. Looks much better, as you can see here. Um, so yeah, much better, and it's amazing at instruction following. So it's really good for agentic workflows because essentially what it does is that it has a set of instructions, it has a task to do, it has a list of tools, and it leverages the tools and the instructions to complete the task, and it will keep going until it completes it, which is super cool. Um, and as you can see here in the OpenAI instruction following eval 4.1, you see it's got 49%, behind 01, 03, and 4.5, interestingly. But Mini is their best one yet. Multi-challenge, blah, blah, blah. So yeah, as you can see, it's really good. So let's give it a try. Today I have some uh, CSV data, which I've gotten from Gemini, just made up data. And then we here we have this big massive prompt, right? TLDR, what is the prompt? Um, basically, I went into here and got our AI tools and updates, this prompting guide, pasted that in, with a basically asking for sales analysis. So if we go up here, um, blah, 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 blah. Have this complex analysis question. Please analyze the provided sales data to provide a comprehensive overview of the company's performance during Q1. It should address, da, 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 be presented as a summary report, include the relevant numbers, overall performance, revenue, order value, and break it down, right? And then it has a bunch of other stuff. And so basically I put this at ChatGPT, with then the instructions, it's giving me back this here, which asks for an MD, so that I can easily copy and paste the whole thing. And this is the massive prompt, which we'll go through after we test it. So on the left-hand side here, we have 4.1. On the right-hand side, we have 04 Mini High, which is their best coding. We could do reasoning as well, so, uh, but we'll go for 04 Mini High first, and then we'll see. So let's push this up. We'll do it for both. We'll see how fast they can do it. So. This one's thinking, this one's starting and analysing. I have a suspicion that 4.1 will be faster and better based on what I've seen so far. But we will let them run out and see. Oh, wow, boom. That was actually really quite fast. Is it done? This one's still thinking. But it's given me a markdown. Great, I've got your promise SVL process file, markdown support as specified. Let's start by loading inspection and sales data. Overall performance, sales drivers, customer and regional insights, it's interesting, data validation and further questions. So further analysis is pretty cool. So we can get it to do the further analysis. I do like how it's in this um, MD format. I don't know if I asked for it to be an MD. Oh, no, there I do. The tone response in markdown format. So this one listened to instructions. This one actually didn't, or it didn't 
put it back out properly because this is in Markdown and then it's rendered inside ChatGPT. The way you can tell that is if you just copy some something here and paste it in, you'll see it comes up with all this. This is Markdown. So we can see here that it comes up overall performance. So let's compare them side by side. Overall performance, got the same numbers, basically the same thing. Sales and drivers, same numbers, same thing. Customer and regional insights, same numbers, same thing. Uh, and data validation for the questions. Pretty much exactly the same, which is actually really quite interesting. But the problem here is that 04 Mini High was it had taken ages, right? Whereas 4.1 was, was a lot faster. And it did give us actually the same thing. What's the data quality potential issues? No issues found. All orders are fine. Orders span this, leaving Q1 lull unrecorded. Impossible outlier revenue 1400. Definitely higher than most other orders. Interesting. High orders. So yeah, they both see different things. So interesting to see the takes. Let's see what the take would be for this exact same prompt, but instead just a normal 4.0. Because there, I was actually surprised at how similar they are. Um, but 4.1, obviously much faster. But it's these further questions and insights where it is interesting. It'd be good in these these types of scenarios, so probably just get one of them, whichever the fastest is, like 4.1, to generate the report based on the numbers, and then paste that in and ask for data validation and further questions to a bunch of models. That'd probably be a cool NAN workflow if you want to hear about that. I'll see it, put it down below, but we'll see where it comes up here. Blah blah blah. Here's the structure performance, that was actually pretty fast too. Let's check the numbers and stuff side by side. Looks good, looks good. Data validation. Looks good, I think. Further analysis. Right, so yeah, so this part of the end, which is just, um, yeah, not as not as thoughtful as, as this one here, but it's really fast again. So honestly, in this one example, I'm not seeing much difference, uh, if I'm being fully honest, based on what other people are saying. And I think that's because I had given it a really solidly structured prompt. For some people, I'd seen them try it with like three sentence prompts, whereas you have to give it a proper solid run. There. So anyway, what is the prompt? How did it um, come about? Let's go and look at the prompting guide. So basically in their prompting guide, it's absolutely massive. So you can go and read that if you want a more detailed um, analysis of it, or so you can copy and paste it and put it in chat GPT as a custom GPT or something, maybe. Good idea. But prompting guide here is you want to start with a role and clear intent. So you want to tell it who it is and what you want it to do. You then want to use explicit instructions for what you want it to do. So you don't want to say, you're an assistant, go do something. It doesn't guess, you need to tell it what to do. So it probably actually could be good to command this from another AI agent, so like a reasoning model could then command this model as like a task agent. I don't know, which is interesting. Um, and then you need to add planning and reflection. So you can say like first plan, then execute, then reflect what well went well, what didn't. If you want to include chain of reasoning or better reasoning, add phrases like think step by step. Let's break this down into smaller parts. What's the first thing we need to check? And then if you want it to be persistent, so like agentic, you have to ask it to do so. So like keep going until the task is complete. Almost stop when you show the problem is fully solved. Otherwise, it will stop early. And then use if then conditions to avoid errors. And if you want to format the output, you can tell it that. And some of the common pitfalls for prompting generally, but also for 4.1, is that people are too vague. You need to be specific. Too open-ended, you need to add constraints. Too passive, say what to do, how and when to stop. And no formal guidance, you need to kind of give it that. So that's one of the biggest misconceptions around using AIs. It's basically people are like, they want an AI, well they go, I want to be a millionaire. Figure everything out, right? And then you want it to go away and figure it all out. But really, these AIs, what they're really good at is you have a quite well-defined problem and or solution, and then you leverage that, detailedly explained, fully thought through, and then get it to execute. You know, it's like, you know, it just does tasks. It's not going to do all the thinking and seeing the little bits that a real expert's going to do, at least not yet. And then an example prompt here is, you're an AI assistant, blah, 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 think step by step, first plan about four, then list the exact steps. If you're unsure about anything, ask, use markdown formatting, blah, 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 and then you want to just test and iterate. So if it doesn't do what you want, you try it again. Just like when you're making any NA10 workflow using a system prompt, you really want to refine that across 
a bunch of executions until you have the best one, which gives you the best executions. Because, you know, it changes every time the response slightly, so it's worth considering. But anyway, so that is the kind of TLDR on GPT 4.1 and how it works. One thing I'm going to do just before we go, is I'm going to go to Apply the AI, which is our paid community. Um, and if I go to Classroom, I'm going to go to Prompt Base, and this is all my prompts that I generally use. We'll do a single page website. I'm going to do a physics lesson website. <laughs> I just want to see how good it is at just kind of creative coding. It's not supposed to be as good as 04 Mini High, but we'll give it a try. So, paste that in. Basically, I'm saying create a physics lesson website complete with multiple live demos of physics in action. Be creative, use 3GS, make it a single HTML. This will mean because it's a single HTML, I can run it inside ChatGPT and see it. And because it's using 3GS, I've told it to, it should be um, like visuals should be dynamic so stuff will move about and float or whatever so let's see how it goes you can see here all four mini highs actually rapid here but i suppose 4.1 is doing not too bad as well and we'll see as well how creative they can be because as i was saying 4.1 you ought to give it as clear of a set of instructions as you could so really you want to get this prompt that i'd sent in where's it gone physics lesson you really want to like run this by an LLM or a couple use your brain as well and figure out what's the best way to actually fully make it. It's like when people use lovable as well, you really want to flesh out what you want to make by talking to some like photo or something or even a reasoning model. Then really flesh out the idea, think of the tech stack etc. Then you slam it into lovable and let lovable actually build what you want to make. So anyway we have here 4.1 is still going on but we can open up on the right hand side here at preview by my head and we can see what we've got so first one bouncing ball we then have pendulum and we have particle so they can see them moving but they maybe need to be on one screen we'll see in a moment this one's still going on yeah so let's make this full screen and we'll see how we're looking let's open it up and we'll preview oh no that's just what it looks like <laughs> Well, um, I suppose maybe it, maybe it works, but it doesn't really. No, that's pretty disappointing. Let's um, check this one out. Oh, it's still going, man. So 4.1 is taking ages code, and I thought it was actually going to be rapid. But um, once it's done, we'll see, because hopefully the reason it's taking so long is because it's, it's worse. So if we edit in Canvas, we can then preview it. And da, 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 da. boom! Oh, I cannot preview fix bug. I mean, first of all, that looks a lot better for the. Let me move it together. Looks a lot better, but um, doesn't work. So let's fix the bug. I'll let them run. I hate when an AI do it, does that. Firebase does it all the time. See Google's one where it'll be like, "There's a bug. Do you want me to fix it?" They're like, no, no, I don't mind it not working. Of course I want you to fix it, man. They're like, we have a Gentic AI. Your Gentic AI doesn't even know that it should fix bugs automatically. Right? Anyway, so here it's um, editing the code by the looks of it. We'll uh, check back in when it's done and see how it's getting on because I can't see anything happening. <laughs> um, it was taking that long. I started eating. I've come back and it's failed to edit. So there you go. I mean, is it a game changer? No. Apparently when people are giving it small prompts, it was faster. But there you go. From my testing, it's not that good. Is it worth even considering having? It doesn't look like it. Should you use it in your NEN workflows for AI agents? Yes. Consider it. Um, but inside ChatGPT, should you use it? Well, it's just another one to run it by. Run your ideas by run the answers from other ones by, but generally, not impressed. So anyway, if you liked the video, like the video. Um, <laughs> if you didn't, comment why. We'll try and make it better. Um, join Apply the AI if you want to learn how to build AI agents from absolute zero, including exclusive videos and a community of like-minded entrepreneurs and builders. If you want the templates and stay up to date with the latest in AI, join the AI Automation Hub. It will be officially released when we hit 10K, which will probably be not long after this video comes out. Anyway, till next time, I'll see you later. Take care. Bye-bye.